we now have a whole new array of legislation that makes it that much more easy for Kenyans, investors to start business and run their businesses in Kenya. We were operating a 1947 Companies Act law. Now we have a brand new one that was signed into law a month ago uh, or two months ago by the president. What does, how does it change? Now it's possible to have a company, limited liability company, registered by an individual. You don't need to carry the baggage of other people anymore. In the past, you couldn't start a company on your own. You needed a partner or two or three. Now you can start a business on your own. <laughs> secondly, secondly, to eliminate a lot of unnecessary expense in managing a business, now you do not need to hire the services of a secretary who sometimes costs more than your capital. You know, we have all these uh, uh, sect law fa firms acting as secretaries. Now you do not need to have a secretary to run your business, as was required by the old law. If you have a small business, you can think of how to manage your business. Thirdly, we do not have the baggage anymore of the law requiring that you need an annual general meeting. You have heard of annual general meeting? If you are running a one-man show, why do you need an annual general meeting? <laughs> So we're creating a new environment for people to, to support new ideas, new innovation, people who are thinking out of the box, people who want to run with ideas and, and create new opportunity, create new business. Because we believe that with the new setup, a new environment, we can create social wealth through innovation. People who can think, come up with new ideas, new innovations, and drive new opportunities into the marketplace. Again, the Insolvency Act, which was signed into law the other day, makes it that much po uh, possible to, f to rearrange when you are in trouble. Instead of being taken for bankruptcy, it's now possible to rearrange your debt so that you do not go into bankruptcy, you create more time to pay your loan and keep your business afloat. We have seen, we have seen in the past, any company that is put under liquidation, or is declared insolvent, or cannot pay their debts, once a company has been said to be in liquidation, you can as well say it is dead. And sometimes it's just because there is a temporary situation that if given some time, that can be reversed and a business can grow. So now we've changed the law so that we have a new insolvency act that again gives you an opportunity. In the event that you run into problems of liquidation, that bankruptcy, unlike in the old law where bankruptcy was an eternal thing, Today, bankruptcy, after three years, that bankruptcy is automatically lifted and you can as assemble or, or salvage whatever is left of that business and still be able to continue. So we're creating a new regime, a new legislative regime that will help startups, businesses, entrepreneurs to manage their ideas, manage their business, in a manner that uh, gives them the best possible opportunity to succeed. We have signed into law a new special economic zones that will create zones within our country that can become incubators of new business, new ideas, in a regime that protects new innovations from taxation, unnecessary, uh, huge infrastructure. We can um, give opportunity to people to deploy infrastructure and make 
that infrastructure, infrastructure available to people who want to engage in startups. Let me say another two last things on the softer issues that we are dealing with. As government, and as you have heard, we've been in this room before. Um, opportunity. Government must make it possible for a new set of Kenyans to be entrepreneurs and to be business people. 30% of all government procurement is now reserved for young people, women, and persons with disability. We still have challenges there, but we are working on the challenges together with the people who that particular reservation has been made. Opportunity will not come to look for you in your bedroom or in your home. You have to get up, pull up your socks, and look for it. My friends, I hear many people complaining Oh, you know there's a problem here. Oh, you know there's a problem there. There will always be problems. Right? As so long as we are here. The only place where there will be no problems, I'm told, is in heaven. So before we get there, there will be problems around here. And you cannot run away from them. So we will continuously engage in eliminating roadblocks, um, hurdles, um, inefficiencies to make sure that the opportunity that has been presented gets to those who that opportunity is intended. But you must get up from wherever you are. You must pull up your socks. You must tighten up your belt. You must roll up your sleeves to get that opportunity. Again, 40% of all government procurement must be from Kenyan farms. And when I say 40% of all government procurement, I'm talking about a procurement of 700 billion shillings every year. 40% of that is in the region of three, 400 billion. That opportunity is available to local entrepreneurs, local business people, and we must seize the moment and look for those opportunities. Again, one last item on the soft issues that we are engaging in is knowledge. Knowledge. Our skills audit in Kenya showed that we had too many people who learned history, they know when Vasco da Gama arrived in Mombasa, <laughs> but they cannot fix the lights when they go off. We have too few technicians, too few technologies, too few artisans, and unless we have that, those kind of skills in our economy, we will not be able to drive Vision 2030. It runs the risk of being Vision 3020. So, we, we, change, we are changing the, the, the education paradigm. You know, the education paradigm must shift. Many of us, many of us parents, have drilled into our children that unless you have a university degree, then you haven't gone to school, which is a very dangerous narrative. Very dangerous. It's not a must that you must have a university degree to be successful. And I keep the, keeping this example. You know, for a very long time, as a country and as citizens and as parents, we've driven this narrative that unless you have gone to a university and got a degree, you are not going to be successful. That is a false narrative. I love education. I have gone to school. 
I am pursuing a PhD as I talk to you and many of those. That's good. But that is not what makes one successful. There is a whole um, junk of people, a whole category of persons that can contribute a huge um, can make a huge contribution to the success of our country without a university degree. And when you talk about university degree, people are even not bothered about a university. Not all of us are going to be neurosurgeons and heart specialists and actuarial scientists. There are some people who will have to do some things for this country to move ahead. Let me tell you, Bill Gates, the richest man in the world, does not have a university degree. Our own Bob Colimo, who runs the biggest successful business in Kenya today, last week they declared 18 billion shillings half-year profit, Safaricom, does not have a university degree. Do you understand? Yes. So we must get it out of our minds that the only way to succeed is to go and get an university degree. No. And that is why, as government, we are changing the education paradigm so that we have education that creates skills, competencies that help drive the the development requirements of our country. That's why we are rolling out a technical training institute in every constituency in our country. We have already done 60. We are doing 70 this year until we have a skills um, shift. Think big and don't listen to people who tell you it can't be done. Till next week, I've been your host, Masharia Mohoho. God bless.